is where I am. So I've just come on a very quick trip with work to Delhi. Um, we've driven three and a half hours from Delhi, where we're staying in the hotel, to come all the way to see this bad boy, the Taj Mahal. We've got an hour and a half now to look around, and then we've got another three and a half hour journey back. That's how short this trip is. One of my colleagues emailed me and said, do you want to go? And I thought it's such a wasted opportunity, because I may never come back here. I may never get to do this again. Um, so it's a short and sweet, brief trip, but I hope you enjoy the Taj Mahal. It's, it's pretty mesmerizing. How are we doing? I am actually right now in Ontario. Toronto. It's currently December. We're coming up to Christmas. I'm staying at an airport hotel, which I've never had to do with work, which means there's nothing to do around here, and I'm not spending 40 bucks on uh, Uber to get into town. So, I thought I'd edit a little video, which I'm doing now. Mahul, Mahal, Mahui. Apparently I keep saying that wrong, so apologies. Um, for friends and family who get annoyed at my pronunciation. Unfortunately, the main grab when you get to this place is to get your photo with the Taj Mahal, to get your snap, get your shot. So all my colleagues who I went with, all the girls I went with, were just after that perfect shot for their Instagram. Come on, ladies! And they see my big camera in my hand, and so what happens? Um, I have to start taking photos non-stop. And the other reason why my quality is not going to be as good and why it's shaky because my microphone got taken off, off me and then also my um, tripod got taken off me and all my buffers. So you literally can only take in one little camera here. You can't take in anything else. Which I thought like the people are lying like you always do like because they just... But I brought my microphone and got confiscated anyway. I can get it back, hopefully. But yeah, it's just not there. Anyway, I think we're about to do a photo shoot with all of the girls. It is just an Instagram money shot for me. That's all this place is. It's 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 busy. It's crowded. There are so many people. That it was just it just it just it just didn't fill me with anything of like immediate joy of seeing the place and going boom. That's the Taj Mahal. I've always wanted to go. Uh, look at it. It's amazing. Now, am I happier when? Of course. If I'd gone to Delhi and I hadn't gone, would I be kicking myself? Of course I would be. The building is phenomenal. It's picturesque. It's beautiful. But, and there's a big but coming here. Have you ever been somewhere where you've seen it all over social media, you've seen it on television, and then you actually get the opportunity to go there? Luckily, I have had the opportunity to do that with a few places now. I've been to Taj Mahal uh, here um, in Delhi. I've also been to the Great Wall of China. I've also been to Christ the Redeemer in Rio de Janeiro. I've also had the opportunity to go to Jerusalem, the birthplace of Jesus, baby Jesus. To rattle off a couple, a few, however, some I believe you go and you see it and it's picturesque and it's beautiful and it's amazing and you have this uh, moment of transparency where you're like, I've seen this now with my eyes and it's everything it was meant to be and I had a great time. However, I would suggest that roughly 60% of the time, just for me this is, it's a lacklustre moment and I get there and I feel deflated and I go, ooh, is that it? And unfortunately, for me, just for me, the Taj Mahal was one of those places. I'm a people person. I'm a massive people person. And when I look back on this trip, I don't look back and I go, oh, I saw the Taj Mahal and it was great and I walked around it and got a few photos and that's amazing. I look back and I will instantly think of the driver who drove us three and a half hours there at two o'clock in the morning and three and a half hours back um, and was pleasant and polite the entire time. Apart from when he nearly fell asleep and we nearly crashed, but yeah. I won't go too much into that because my friends and family might get worried. However, we didn't crash and he was awake, but he was very sleepy. And then we got to the Taj Mahal and then when we got there of all the kids who are far brighter and far more intelligent than half the people back in England who had the opportunity to have an education. And I'm gonna talk about one particular guy and he's in the video and it's all about this kid called Samir and he had all these little bracelets, these charms and it's a lot of junk and so the pra I praised the girls who I was with we didn't buy in, nobody wanted the junk, we are all just chatting She's and so when he knew he wasn't going to get a sale from us he just started chatting with us, or I thought, innocently and I think, oh, he's just chatting with us and we got to know him. He spoke Spanish, bits of it, not too much. He spoke Italian, but he was fluent in English. Now this kid, he said he was about nine or ten. I reckon he was a little bit older, maybe, um, but not by much. 
And this this kid basically was just going on and on about how oh I want to do this, I want to do that, and I want to go into university and and everything. And it's a shame to chat with people like this because for all I know, for the next five ten years, he might just be on the streets, like living on the streets. However, he had incredible morals and was incredibly articulate for that age. And he blew us all away. We couldn't believe what we were watching. We were all just looking at this kid. And then at the end of it, I go what? Because he played me. You just heard what I was saying about him and how amazing this kid was, Samir. Because what happens, just as we're about to get on the bus and our bus driver pulls up again, he's suddenly just like, oh no, take them. Take them as a gift. I, I want you to take them back to London as a gift. He starts putting bracelets on all of the girls. And before they can do anything, they've all got little bracelets on their wrists. His bracelets. So what happens as soon as they get on the bus, he's kissing them all goodbye, still playing the charmer, still trying to win them over. But he did that 25 minutes ago. And then what happens? All the girls start taking out their rupees. Rupees out the wallet. Rupees out the purse and giving them through the window and he's going oh thank you it's so kind it's a gift it's a gift so they didn't purchase the bracelets they exchanged a gift rupees for the gift of the bracelet and that's fine that's fantastic it probably was the equivalent to about three pounds which is uh, cheaper than coffees in london these days and so that means absolutely nothing oh please I've just had to swap to the much lower quality of my phone because Philip brings three batteries that are all dead and he's also going on a trip as soon as he lands that he wants to film and he doesn't think he has the specific cable that charges Z batteries. But I need to finish this commentary about Samir quickly. This is what happens when you take someone incredibly intelligent who's also quite charming, um, who people feel sorry for and we all felt sorry for the kid and it's a shame that circumstance puts some people in some places and other people in others but I think he's going to do well for himself this kid. Oh my God, he's going to be in my head for a long time. Ladies did we have a good time yeah, at the Taj Mahal? So yeah. Short but sweet. I think we spent what two hours yeah. there if that hour and a half and now we got a three and, three and a half hour slog back and we're going to get some grub. Um, but yeah, I didn't film much because um, my microphone got taken away and we were taking those pictures. But right at the end there, that little kid, Namir was it? Yeah. Samir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my yeah. gosh, he's a little grinder and he got them. What, what did you girls show me your wrist really quickly? Oh, that's yeah. around with these for the best part of 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. yeah. And the girls are like, no, no, no. <laughs> and then what happened? You all cracked, we didn't you? We gave you all cracked. <laughs> But yeah, and then we've got a little coke and snackage from our lovely driver here, and we're heading back now. Fantastic. That's what I remember. When people are like, oh, you went to Taj Mahal, how was it? I'll go, hmm, the building's meh, pretty, great for a photo. But everyone I saw along the way, and the streets of Delhi, and the monkeys, and the cows, and how people live, just seeing how people live was far more interesting to me on the streets and the city where the Taj Mahal is. It's far more interesting than an empty building for someone who died over 100 years ago. That's my thoughts, that was my takeaway from this trip. I hope you enjoyed the short video and the like cute little shots of the Taj Mahal. Um, don't let me dismay you, I'm not trying to be negative, I'm trying to be honest. Um, always honest on this channel and always honest with you, not just with my friends and family, but anyone else who watches this. I try and tell you how it is. And that's how my trip to Taj Mahal was. It was fantastic, it was a great trip. I was shattered because of the journey times and the lack of sleep. But I'm very happy that I went. Um, but would I go again? The answer is no. I've been there. It's one of those places, unfortunately, which sounds horrible to say, where you go, I've been there, done that. It's been ticked off the list. Would I go back to Delhi and explore the city and the people and the culture and the food and meet more people? And hell yes, I want to go back to Delhi. Also, if you're new here and you like what you see, then subscribe to this channel. I've got a backlog of videos. Guys, I know I keep saying it, but I've got about seven videos worth of footage from Italy when I went with my brothers. I've got most biking videos. I'm going to Budapest as soon as I land in about 24 hours time, less than 24 hours time. I'm gonna be flying in about, oh God, my flight's in about 16 hours time. And I'm in Toronto right now. That's the wacky part of my life. Toronto, London, Budapest, all in the space of a day. Fun times. And I've got so many videos anyway. I've got to start pumping them out. I've really got to start working. Um, if you didn't know, which you probably do, because most of my friends and family do, I'm, I'm studying at the moment. Lots of studying um, to become a personal trainer. I'm doing a diploma. So there's lots of work going on in terms of studying for a diploma, to be a personal trainer, for editing videos on my blogs, trying to settle into my new flat in London with my new flatmate. 
it's all kicking off. 2019 hasn't been my year. 2020 is, we're going, we're going in at a full pace through December. We're gonna finish off this month hard with a good Christmas. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry I had to swap over to this little stingy camera afterwards because that one died. Um, but I'll see you in the next one. Bye. So guys, thank you very much for watching.